For the following exercises, given the function f, evaluate f of negative 1, f of 0, f of 2, and f of 4. All right, so if we look down here at the bottom, just remember, right, that in what it means to evaluate f of a number, all it means is basically plug in the number 4x into the given equation, all right, and simplify. We just have to keep in mind here that we're dealing with piecewise functions, and therefore the domain is going to be important to consider, all right? So let's take a look at the first one here. Um, so what we need to do is we need to evaluate, the first thing is to evaluate f of negative 1, right? Now basically what this means is that we're going to take negative 1 and plug it into our equation. But we realize, oh no, we have two equations, right? So what are we going to do? So what you have to do is you have to see where your x value lies in these constraints, okay? Negative 1 is going to be less than 0. So I negative 1 falls under this constraint, and therefore I use this equation, all right? So now I'm going to write out that equation, so 7x plus 3. But remember, we're basically going to take this x value and just throw it on in for x, all right? So let me just backtrack one step. So instead of writing x there, I'm going to write negative 1 plus 3. Now all I'm going to do is simplify. This is negative 7 plus 3 is going to be a positive 4. So that takes care of that. Now we're going to look at evaluating f of 0. That's the next question, right? So now 0, you have to figure out which uh, constraint it falls under, and it falls under this constraint because it says to use this equation now when or if x is greater than or equal to 0. So that being the case, right, I'm going to do 7 times my x value of 0 plus now 6. So that works out to be 6. Then I'm going to do f of 2. That's the next question. So again, I'm still going to use the second equation because 2 is greater than 0. So this is 7 times 2 plus 6, and that's going to now equal, right? This is 14 plus 6, so that's 20. And now, lo and behold, we do the last one, so f of 4. Again, same equation, so it's going to be 7 times 4 plus 6, right? 7 times 4 is going to be 28. Add 6 to it, so that's 34. Great. Now let's take a look at the second one. All right, same exact thing. So now f of negative 1. Where does negative 1 fall within these constraints? It falls under the first constraint, right, where x is less than 2. So you're going to be using this equation. So plug in negative 1 for your x value. So this is negative 1 squared minus 2, right? And negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. Positive 1 minus 2 then is going to be a negative 1. Next one was going to be f of 0. Again, 0 is still less than 2, so therefore I'm going to use the same equation. So this is 0 squared minus 2. Right? This should simply be negative 2. That's easy. How about f of now positive 2? Now you have to now shift your attention to the second equation. Why? Because 2 falls under that constraint. Right? This is saying to use this equation if and when x is greater than or equal to 2. And we do have the value of 2 this time. So basically, we're going to take 4, add it now to the absolute value of our x value, which is 2, and subtract that from 5. Underneath this um, absolute value, right, 2 minus 5 would be a negative 3. Taking the absolute value of that, it becomes a positive 3, right? So getting rid of that, it becomes positive. And then add to that a 4. So that's obviously now 7. And last but not least, we'll evaluate f of 4. Same equation, because it falls under this constraint again. So it's going to be 4 plus uh, 4 minus 5. Okay, four, oops, 4 minus 5. And again, this would turn out to be a negative 1 inside, but then take the absolute value that's positive 1, add that to 4, and that works out to be a 5. All right? Last equation. So it looks harder, but it's no harder, right? We deal with each piece individually depending upon the values of x we are talking about. So f of negative 1. Where does that fall under? Which constraint? Well, it falls under the first constraint, right? Negative 1 is less than 0. So I'm going to use this equation. So 5 times negative 1, simply negative 5. The second question is going to be f of 0. So where does 0 lie? Well, 0 lies under this constraint now, right? Because this interval is basically saying that x can take on any value from 0, including 0, all the way to 3, including 3. All right, so I use now this equation, and you'll say to yourself, well, wait a minute, there is no x value. 
say to yourself, oh, that's actually great. I don't have to do any math. It's just three. That's it. Over and done with. So let's now talk about f of 2. Again, we, talk, we know it's going to fall under this constraint, so we get the same answer. And last but not least, we're going to do now f of 4, which falls under this constraint. 4 is greater than 3. So I'm going to use this equation so it becomes 4 squared, and that's equal to 16. All right, guys? Easy peasy. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, help us out, spread the word. We'll see you next time.